Right now, we're going to have some fun time here in the studio with Mark Vasco. How you doing there, Marco? Very good. Jimmy T, what's the word? Well, I want to talk to you a uh, little sports here because um, our Blackhawks. <laughs> I know. It's been we've an interesting got, couple of weeks. Yeah, we've got, we've, got the, um, we've got the convention coming up. It's going to be a very interesting Blackhawk mm. convention in a couple of weeks, as I'm sure fans are going to have lots to be talking about and lots of questions for, um, for the Blackhawk um, hierarchy here. But uh, what is your take on... On what the you know the salary cap and how it has decimated the Blackhawks the last four to five years. Well, it really has. I mean, if this was a you know baseball, we'd still be winning cups because you know you yeah. have to worry about that. Or even if it's you know basketball where you can just pay the salary, you know, we can right. pay the luxury tax, or and, and who you cares can go over and whatever. Yeah, we this is paid a, it. this and the NHL is a, hard, it's a hard cap. cap. And and they have and they have made some mistakes. I mean, they have. I mean, we basically traded away Sharp to save money and got basically nothing in return because yeah. the defenseman we got for him we've already let go because he didn't really do anything. Yeah. And then, you know, they made the decision to you know let Oduya go. That that I'll tell you. I I remember I was very surprised. But once again, I mean, they've had their their hands tied. But right. I thought that, gosh, if there's some creative accounting. Johnny Aduya is a guy you want to have on that team. And they gave Bickle way too much money, and that hamstrung them as well. Well, but, you know, let's think back now. At that moment, Bickle was huge in that play. Even though he didn't have a good season that year, he had an amazing playoff and an amazing Stanley Cup, and nobody was arguing when he got that contract. So let's be Oh, no, but I mean, fair. Just, you know, but it hurt. As yes. it turns out, yes. you know, no doubt about that. That that made the last couple of years difficult now. To, and now Shaw, you know, you, you missed on Shaw. Actually, it's actually six years he gets with the Canadians for 3.9 mil per. And, and even his agents said like, they did all they could do. They, they came up to 3 million a year, but that's all they could afford because of the cap. Yeah. And it's hard to turn down almost an, a mil- Another million. Know, $6 million basically over six years. Yeah. But at the same point. How many millions can you spend? Well, you, you know, know, first of all, what Andrew Shaw should have done was called a Brian Saad. I, well, yeah, I know. Now, the Canadians are a different animal than well, the right. Columbus Blue Jackets. Well, right, yes. But still, the Canadians didn't make the playoffs either. <laughs> well, no, but that sweater does mean more than, yes, the, than the jacket sweater does. does. Yes, yeah. without a doubt. But my point is right. that, you know, in Chicago, there are few ta- Now, certainly in Montreal, or Montreal, <laughs> uh, you know, hockey is... Unbelievable! I've been to the, the Hockey Hall of Fame, and basically the Hockey Hall of Fame is basically the Montreal Canadiens team. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I mean, it's just everywhere. So, yeah, I mean, he's going to be in a hockey town, no doubt about that. Um, but at the same time, Chicago is not only a hockey town, it's a winning hockey town. Yeah, right. And I wonder if he could have not made that million dollars or whatever it was up in endorsements or just the fact of how many chances do you get to play on a team like this that has this core of Kane and Taves and and Seabrook well, and, and, yeah. and, and Duncan Keith. You're preaching to the converted here. I'm going to completely agree. Well, and that's why we got Brian Campbell back. Right. How about Brian that? Brian Campbell. Yeah. On a discount. He turned down... <laughs> Over four million right. to take the two million right. to come here, so he gets it. He Saad gets it. Did not get it. Well, he gets it because he's been away. Well, exactly, and he knows what he's missing. It wasn't here, exactly, and uh, you know, and that's the thing is that you know, I mean, don't forget these guys are young, and especially guys like Brian Saad and uh, uh, and um, and now Shaw. You know, they, they grew up, they came up through the, the system. They won cups so early right. in their careers that right. they act like, well, this happens all the time. And wait till you go away and see how often it doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. And there were some players that went their whole careers. There were Ernie Bankses of hockey. Oh, absolutely. Who never won a cup. And, and that locker room isn't as much fun as ours. And all the, you know, and that coach isn't as good as ours. And all those things you learn. And the Hawks are treat the Blackhawks organization, oh. not only is it first class from top to bottom, but the players are treated with an un in an incredible respect, and the biggest, you know, biggest houses in yeah. the league. You know, there's never an empty seat, and all. So, those kind of I mean, I I understand the money yeah. you take. You know, hockey. You know, hey, you know, in one shot, a guy's career is over. You know, hitting the head, hitting the leg. I mean, I understand that, and but at the same time, the experience of what you're going through is also needs to be taken into consideration, and it seems like. When that comes, there's very few players that take that in consideration. They go for the money, and then they 
And the other interesting thing that, that Brian Campbell just said was the team leader. That, that means a lot. Right. You know, and he's, I'm coming back to the captain. <sighs> right. You know, and Taves, that, you know, he's the, he's the pro. Yeah. And a guy like Campbell who's been around, he's not a young kid anymore, appreciates what it's like to be on a team, you know, where everybody's going in the same direction because the one guy's pulling you there and a classy guy like Taves. Yeah, well, I tell you, I mean, you, you can't fault the Blackhawks because I said, hey, every team makes mistakes. Right. I think it, 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 over, overall, I think you have to be impressed with Stan Bowman's job Oh, here. absolutely. Uh, You're not going to get 100%. No. It's not. But think about over the last five years, we're talking about this cap, and it's a hard cap, meaning that there are no ifs, ands, or buts. There's no luxury taxes. There's no penalties you pay. You have to be underneath, I think it's, what, 73, 70, 72, 73 million dollars? I think there was now, yeah. This year. So... Uh, think about the players that we just we Brandon Saad, Patrick Kane or <laughs> Patrick Sharp, right. now Andrew Shaw, right. Aduya. Yeah. We lost Lad. Yeah, we yeah. lost Letty. Yep. We lost. Um, oh yeah, don't a few you, other guys. You're not cheering me up. At I all, mean, this know. is a whole. That's a whole oh, line. I know. I know. That's a whole all star line on this team. That to your point earlier, if there was no cap, you know. These this would be these these would be dynasties. Look, listen to those guys. You know, those, those guys were on one team. Oh, well, I know. Well, and, those, that's, and I'm not even counting Taves and Kane. I mean, those Bulls six championships would be in doubt here it, with the Hawks just because you wouldn't have lost all those guys. Well, you know, and you and I are, are Cubs guys. That's the thing I'm worried about with the Cubs. Now I know there's no cap, but there's only so much money to go around. Exactly. All those. Young well, now that ki- they won't let them sell beer in the plaza. I mean, all those young <laughs> kids are all making peanuts right now. Yeah. But eventually but they they're gonna, all going to yeah. cash oh, in. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. can you pay all of those yeah. guys yeah. No kid- well, when that- all that comes due? So they better win early. Yeah, that's the, well, that's, that's they the price. might break up too, even without a cap. That's the price of success. Right. Here's the thing that, that, uh, that bugs me, though. Now, obviously, the hard cap is in for two reasons. First of all, and, and I didn't even realize this, but apparently Bill Wirtz was one of the proponents of the hard cap. <laughs> because back then, you know, hockey and still... As a sport, while you can't take Chicago, if you're new to the game of hockey, right. you can't take Chicago well, as an right. example because Chicago has loved hockey for years, and now that it's been so successful, it's dominated the city. But all around the country, hockey is still fighting. It's that fourth sport. Oh, absolutely. So here's, here's take, l- let me take in the Wayback Machine. Already? When you and I were youngsters. Yes. When there was television. <laughs> When black and white back in their days, when there was no S- new ESPN mm-hmm. in baseball, for instance, when there when there were dynasties, and on football, when there was no once again, there was just you know ABC on Monday night and Channel Two and Channel Five. That's where oh, football yeah. was. You saw your dynasties in football, like the Cowboys or the uh, at the, the 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 Pittsburgh Steelers or later the the 49ers. when they would have these one games of the week. They would always show those teams in baseball in the 70s. Hard to believe, but there was a game of the week on Saturday. Oh, right. That was it. Aside yeah. from your local team, oh, yeah. all you saw was one game a week. And pretty much in the 70s, it was either the, uh, the, the Dodgers playing somebody or the Reds. Even, there weren't even many American, maybe the A's, the Oakland A's. Well, the Sunday NBA game of the week, was the, you saw three. There was, it was the Knicks. The Celtics right. or, or the Sixers. Those were the, whatever right. combination of those three teams played each other was the Sunday game. You didn't see any other NBA Maybe teams. Portland with Bill Walton was out. <laughs> Maybe. But here's my point. But as a as a fan growing up, as a young kid learning about these sports, I know they're looking for parity as well, so that one team isn't too dominant. But it was those dynasty teams that you saw every week, even if they weren't from your town, All right. that you saw the game being played at a top level. Oh, yeah. So now you said, I like this sport. Right. Let me look at my local team. But first, I got turned on by the sport oh, being yeah. played. Well, I can still rattle off the starting lineup of the Cincinnati Reds from oh. 1975. Oh, yeah, because the big they, red machine where they yeah, were hit. absolutely. Because they were on every week. And yeah. so my point is, at this point where hockey is, Instead of worrying about parity at this point, they should either raise this cap or, or, or loosen it up with the luxury taxes and allow some of these dynasties to happen because you're still selling your sport to, I would say, 60 to 75 or 80% of, this, of the country are still not hockey fans yet. Right. No, you're only hurting your product. I yeah. completely agree. So you shouldn't look to break up these teams because that's what helps 
people learn about the game, learn about the players, and then they go, well, geez, if the, if the Cowboys are so great, how's my team? If the Reds are so great, how's my team? If the Blackhawks are so great, maybe I will watch the Columbus Blue Jackets. Well, that's why those outdoor games are losing their luster, because they're trying to get all the teams involved in everything. But if the game isn't any good, then what's the point? <laughs> and, you got, and you have to have good teams right, playing. And you have exactly. to have saleable teams yeah, right. and, and saleable players. So that you, it's, it's okay that if somebody in Columbus yeah. is wearing a Patrick Kane jersey, that's okay for yeah. your sport. For that sport, a dynasty is a good thing. Exactly, at least at this point. Yeah, I so yeah, anyway, I with we're going to take a quick break. I'm talking to Mark Vasco about the, some Blackhawks. We maybe get into a little Cub talk because, my gosh, what's happening to, uh, <laughs> to the, to the pres- you know All this summer we've got pres- uh, presumptive nominees. The right. Cubs have been presumptive world champions <laughs> since <laughs> April 4th. Just about. Yeah. And suddenly uh, the, the old Chicago paranoia yeah, is fine. creeping in it's but you could see it fine. and hear it <laughs> anyway i'm elton jim toronto here at wgn <laughs> 7 20 a.m in chicago filling in for brian noon and i'll be here till uh, nine o'clock we'll be back right after this bryant in the air deep center it will go oh, oh baby go. give me that read again andre give me a read 4,972 feet. <laughs> Three run homer for Bryant. It's 7 to 3. Number three. Full house time, baby. Since 1913, he is the first player ever to do this. Three homers and two doubles. How funny is it that that Go Cubs Go song? was actually rejected after a couple of years <laughs> when it was first right. put out in the uh, in the 80s it was by Steve Goodman who was a a noted folk singer here in Chicago who uh, passed away from cancer at a very young age but he was a huge cub fan in fact he wrote this other great song the dying what was it the dying last dying yeah dying cub fans last request last request and um but then he so they they get Steve Goodman to write the song for the Cubs and then everyone hated it. It was like for one year, two years that they got rid of it, and now thirty years later it comes back. But um, Elton Jim here, uh, Toronto, uh, with you on uh, WGN, and I'm talking to uh, sports reporter Mark Vasco. We're just uh, talking about our Blackhawks and how I still. I mean, at the end of the day, it's it's, it's very sad to see um, players like Andrew Shaw. And Tara Vainen, I thought, was a keeper. Right, 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 right. That one was, I mean, and, and if you remember, when they got rid of Tara Vainen, he was basically the throw-in so that Carolina would pay for Bickle. Right, right. Which was sad. <laughs> right. But everybody said, okay, well, they had to get rid of Bickle so they could pay Shaw, and then they couldn't pay Shaw. And if you remember now, to show you how hard this cap is and how it is really, you know, now it's not just something that's slightly affecting the Hawks. It's seriously affecting the Hawks. To show how serious this was, the last press conference of the year, Quenville came out and said, Andrew Shaw is irreplaceable. <laughs> Except for... irreplaceable. <laughs> Except if we can't afford him. And yeah. like Brandon Saad, if you remember, when the Hawks won the cup on the ice as they are carrying oh, the, yeah. the cup yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. Stan Bowman, the general manager of the team, goes up to Brandon Saad and says, we want you on this team. And then they have to get rid of him. And then, again, because they're not going to take the hometown discount. I, I guess. guess. Well, you know, I, I was looking at available free agents. We can bring uh, Versteeg back and we can, <laughs> or Tuomo Rutu. You want those guys? Because oh, those guys are still out there. So, we all get know. the same. All, we, all we're doing so is get, We and, brought Campbell back. We can bring those guys. And back. don't you think, are, would the, well, is there a chance that they would bring Sharp back? Isn't this contract up? Um, Pretty soon? I don't think it's this year, though. Oh, but still, you never know. You never know. But uh, anyway, so we do have the Blackhawks convention coming up, I believe, on the 15th. So certainly that's going to be a hot ticket because uh, Blackhawk fans are passionate at the very least. Yes, and um, By the well, way, for, for Bulls fans, it looks like Rajon Rondo has agreed to a two-year deal to be a Bulls. So they do actually have an actual point guard now in Rajon Rondo. So. Ah, okay. I tell you, you know, we we're talking about the Bulls. Just uh, the Blackhawks, uh, I still think... You know, while it's tough times, when you still have that core of, of people like, oh, yeah, you know, they're still a, they're still, yeah, they're, they're still good. good. Yeah. 
But there's you know there's still good. Oh, there's yeah. a lot of good teams out there. But it's a shame to see what has oh, had to happen because they have done such a great job of finding this talent Absolutely. and and in integrating it and making good teams. And then every year they're forced to break them up. Quickly about the Bulls. Um, uh, can I dispel two rumors? There was never a Derrick Rose era. <laughs> no, there's no rings to show for. Them. No, there's no rings. There's no nothing. <laughs> I, I know. I know. He's not a legend. He's a ligament. He, he had he had an MVP. Then he had yeah. a lot of Mark Pryor towel drills. Yeah, That's exactly. All he had. Yeah, I mean, and and a horrible attitude. Oh yeah, he never said the right no. thing at all. I mean, it's just I, I, you know, but this era, there was no era. No. Jordan had an era. <laughs> yes, that's yes. an era, yeah. folks. Don't give years. Derrick Rose no, no, an era. No. no, no, no. I don't see any banners up there no. with you know that were part of of number one's era. No, I mean, and and think about how crazy he was talking about free agency this year or last year. Oh, when the season ended, I know. Before when the, the Bulls know. have basically paid him right. to sit. With a Nautilus Earn machine. Earn some money before you talk yeah. about your next contract. Yeah. And I know everybody's, they loved uh, Johan, you know, Noah. They loved him. I understand. He didn't win either. Well, and he got hurt. It's the and same thing hurt. as D. Rose. It's like Rose and Noah are nowhere near the players that they were. The Knicks can have them. I would. Yeah. The Knicks gave Noah like $72 million. He can't run. I saw something on the internet. I don't know if it was the Onion or not. It said Phil Jackson's just signed Benny, Benny the, the Bull. Bull. Yes, I saw the same thing. <laughs> 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 and very quickly, uh, we got run out of time. It's always so short. Uh, time flies by when I talk to you. Uh, so, uh, look. The we Cubs talk, are going to be fine. Yeah, we talked about this be at fine. the beginning of the season. They're going to be fine. Uh, I think, yeah, every team goes through this. is 162 games. Teams will go through this. Yes, they lost to the Mets. Okay, New York, and they're a contender, blah, blah, blah. The Cubs are still nine games up despite all this, folks. Yeah, still They've the got the best record in baseball. The best record in baseball. So, let's hold yeah, on. Let's wait. Fine. But uh, they're hurt. They'll, the guys are going to yeah, come I mean, back. Fowler is a, a huge, you know, a huge person to be missing. But it just goes to show you once again that, and I said this at the beginning of the year, it's weird to be a Cub fan and actually say, oh, right. that they're going to win and believe it. We were always in this weird right. mystical denial. Oh, right. But this year, this team is legit. And I think once again, that's that Chicago paranoia. We're always waiting for the next shoe to drop. We're waiting for the September or October swoon. And, and and but this team is different. Madden is different. The team is different. And I, I think that despite a losing streak, yes, it hurts to hurt to, you know, you know, Arietta is not gonna win every game, folks. He's not a machine. And it doesn't matter if he's not the best pitcher in baseball. If he's the tenth best pitcher yeah, in baseball. We're still okay. That's fine. Yeah. You know, that's fine with me. So just hold on. No, they're I, going I, to be fine. I mean, and it doesn't matter. We don't get an extra prize if they win one hundred and sixteen. Doesn't games. matter. Does they win 101 and win the division, that's fine. Again, the Mariners won 116 and didn't even get to the World Series exactly. that year. So, so. That, that that doesn't matter. All I'm looking at, they're still up by nine games. They're yeah, fine. They're up by nine yeah, games, folks. Yeah. That's We're all, not, that's all that matters to me. Win the division. That's yeah, all that matters. That's so, you know, once again, home field advantage. The games are still fun. That Bryant game, oh. that homers over doubles game was oh. unbelievable that and, you know, game. And this guy, you know, what's so funny is, He's quietly hit how many home runs this year? Like yeah. twenty some. Like twenty two now. I think. Yeah. This. And I mean, and that and that Wednesday game. It's that, not even the All Star break. That eleven thirty in the morning game. Yeah, right. Against Cincinnati. Yeah. That was about. That was a perfect baseball game. Right. They couldn't. I, I just was watch. I watched every minute of that game. I was like, "This is the most fun I've ever had watching a baseball." They did everything well. They pitched well. Yeah. Played incredible defense. They got hits when they needed it. I'm just enjoying them. The fact that they're yeah. fun to watch. Yeah, these last couple of games. Right. That's going to happen. But by and large, they're just so much fun to watch. And for my team, for that to say that is, is amazing. Saying. I mean, you look at the Baez, who everybody was kind of questioning after last oh my year. Gosh, you see a player now. The guy yeah. is is really living up to his yeah, hype. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Cub fans. Just it, you've got we've got a good team. They bring up a, that Contreras kid. He yeah, can play. They're a good yeah, team, no. and every team goes through losing streaks. And as we said before, they're nine games up. <laughs> Just calm <laughs> down. Know. Three or four losses in yes. a row, or six out of eight I is mean, not. Hey, the anything can happen. I'm not saying World Series yet, but they are. You know, they're they're up by nine games, and you know, and we're halfway through. They're they're going to be okay. Yeah, yeah, no. So. Just enjoy it anyway. <laughs> Take a pill, relax. Yeah. Enjoy. Oh my God, it's so funny. <laughs> but uh, I I am hoping our Blackhawks can uh, can get over this adversity because my gosh, to see the the great teams and the great players. And the good people, those guys are. I've, I've met a lot of those guys, and they were really good guys too. And they they were pros. And to see them leave is is kind of tough. But uh, anyway, Mark Vasco, 
local sports caster. It's always fun to uh, to talk sports. Thank you, with Jim. You. Thank you. It is uh, right here, top of the hour, eight o'clock. This is Chicago's very own seven twenty WGN Chicago and WGN Radio dot com.